Quinn here, Life After Money. Uh, now this is the third one of my trucking life videos. I told you about the start of how I got my license and the first job. first job was at Nestle and now we're going to move on a little bit. Um, I was at Nestle for about 18 months or so and during that time I also got myself a PSV license as well. Now I found my badge. We all, all bus drivers were issued with one of these badges and I made this little leather pouch for it. So you would wear it when you was out driving a bus and I remember going taking coach parties out when you stopped at a motorway service area for a break and you took 53 passengers in there they had a special driver's area there in the restaurant where we as drivers got free food so that was a bit of a bonus um, yeah so this is my old badge I don't think we use them now but um, yeah, so 18 months at Nestle's and bus driving, coach driving, I was getting a bit bored because once I've learned how to do a job, it becomes repetitive and it's just boring to me. I like to be constantly learning, learning something new, um, something interesting. I want to drive in different parts of the country, I want to drive different vehicles and although people said bus driving is a really easy job because your load walks on and off but I was <laughs> beginning to find that sometimes they were quite hard work actually <laughs> passengers were quite hard work at times some of them were lovely some of the pensioners loved it when you took them out for a coach trip right out somewhere a mystery trip and then you ended up at a pub for a drink or a meal that was great um, but I didn't do so well with the school buses because I didn't really like naughty children but um, yeah, the, the, the older people um, loved their coach trips it's quite funny now I am a pensioner <laughs> and this is the time when I should be thinking about going out on a coach trip myself but I really can't bring myself to do that because you know I was driving them <laughs> and I don't really want to sit for like several hours on a coach as a passenger I much prefer to drive myself somewhere in my own car or maybe the odd train journey but um, yeah so what did I do after Nestle's? Well I went to work for an agency because it meant that I was a temp driver so they could send me to a different place every day actually you know I could go to a different job I was like a temporary relief driver um, when a regular driver was off work so I would um, report into duty for duty wherever my boss sent me um, I was given a time and a place to go and report now you, as you can imagine a female turning up for work where they would never had a female before did create a bit of a stir actually um, but uh, I had mixed, I had mixed um, reactions to that and um, I went to do a job driving skip lorries and the boss was not best pleased and he rang up my boss, the agency boss, he rang him up and said what have you sent this woman for? She doesn't know how to do the job. So my boss said well if you show her how to do it she'll do it. So anyway with that he gave me some training on how to lift the skips on and off the lorry that's these the dumpsters I think they call them in the USA um, so I had to learn the controls to get the skips on and off the lorry and for the rest of that week I was going into it was in Derby by the way I was going into British Rail and Rolls Royce two of the biggest employers in Derby 
and I was fetching the full skips out, taking them down the tip, bringing them back empty and uh, quite often I forgot where I picked them up from. <laughs> so massive places, hundreds of skips, so I would just bring the empty skip back and dump it somewhere and of course I couldn't remember where I picked it up from. And I remember going to the, the offices, big big building, multi-storey building, and word had got round that there was a woman driving the skip lorry. And uh, I looked up at the windows and there was faces at every one of them. <laughs> and I thought that was really funny. And uh, I just stood there and went, yoo-hoo! <laughs> yes, I am a woman! <laughs> oh dear. But um, yeah, this, at the end of that job, five days on that job, the skip boss, he rang my boss up again and he said, your lady driver's brilliant, we'll have her again. <laughs> and I was dead sick because it was a horrible job. So I had to keep going back there. But um, yeah, mixed, mixed responses. I remember going to fetch a bin lorry. I was doing the bins, you know, the 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 bins around the houses, and it, it, we have wheelie bins now for our rubbish, but it was black bags then. So I was the driver. I picked the vehicle up at one depot, drove around the corner to another depot to pick the crew up. That's two or three men that's come out, and uh, and of course I pulled in the yard looking for my crew and they were all coming out and saying oh yes I'll go I'll go I'll go <laughs> so that was another funny moment there were lots of funny moments um the agency right I was doing new jobs all the time jobs I've never done before driving new vehicles I've never driven before um I remember an eight wheel Foden tipper lorry my god the gears in that were horrendous but um, another driver gave me some quick instruction on the gear lever because you've got like about 16 gears and they are really tough to drive but um, I was ready to go out of the yard and I managed to select one gear I don't know which gear it was but I selected one gear and then lifted the clutch and rolled gently out of the yard down the street and then when I got out of earshot I then started playing tunes on the gearbox <laughs> oh dear finding the gears was terrible on that one um, yeah I've got a bit of a list here um, aggregate sand aggregate on the, the, the tipper lorry um, a mobile library <laughs> yes I could drive a mobile library and issue books as well. I was delivering bicycles for Rally Bicycles. So I, went, I used to go out every week, uh, well every Monday for several days at a time. I had a box trailer and it was triple decked. So it was absolutely unpacked full of bicycles. I would go out for the week and travel around to different shops delivering two or three here, two or three there different towns all over the place um, so that that was I was doing some nights out at that time and uh, quite often I had to drive down the high street and then I, I unload the bicycle at the front of the shop you know and you got to know your unloading times as well when vehicles were allowed to unload or weren't so uh, <laughs> bicycle three-piece suites you know carpets I delivered carpets to shops as well. So I, I remember pulling up at the front of a store once and opened the back doors, select the right carpet, massive big roll. So I'm stood there pulling the thing out, dragging it out. And the blokes were stood in the doorway, just gobsmacked looking at me. So I said, well, if you want this carpet in there, you'll have to come and help me get it out. <laughs> So they did, <laughs> yeah, so, oh, fridges, yeah, fridges, tippers, skips, um, every job was building up my experience, and, uh, but I loved it, 
because I really had to get my thinking cap on here uh, and you know and really put, put all my effort into it. People used to look down on me or all agency drivers actually well regular drivers which were employed used to think that agency drivers were working for an agency because they couldn't get a proper job. Well it might have been the case in some of them um, but I also found that being an agency driver you had to be a lot better than their own regular drivers. You see a driver could stay in a job for several years now there's not much skill involved in that because as I said you learn the job you do it repetitively and you know that's not very clever really but I was you know the one that had to adapt had to learn new things so I reckoned you know I was pretty good you know and, and learning all these things um, yeah and I had to be better than the men at times because they were always looking for me to make mistakes I and mean, I've heard it said a few times oh it's because she's a woman what do you expect and uh, I, I also had to stick up for myself a lot now before I started driving I was a completely different person I was very shy and uh, I just yeah I was very shy, I was quite quiet actually, but I soon had to learn to stick up for myself because it was either sink or swim basically, you know, don't let them get to me, you know, take whatever they throw at me but bounce back and that's what I always do, I always bounce back because like a new morning to me, a new morning, a new day is a new start because you can't change what's happened the day before and so I would get up every morning full of enthusiasm because I was proud of being a lorry driver <laughs> um, also yeah you've got to keep a degree of femininity as well why why are you toughening up inside you see I was accused of wanting to be a man well, no, I didn't want to be a man at all. Um, I was quite happy being me as a woman. So, you know, it's, it's quite difficult to, to do actually because some male traits do rub off on you. They, they do because you've got to stick up for yourself. I, I could swear as good as they could, they could, you know. Um, and occasionally I did have to let rip <laughs> I must admit I don't sway now well not much <laughs> but I know all the words I know all the words you know. um, so somebody was horrible to me uh, I, I could just give them some stick back again but I, I couldn't do that in the beginning I had to learn that um, so the agency I was there for about three, three, three years I think it was a great learning curve yeah I mean they had, they had good reports from uh, companies that um, let me drive their trucks <laughs> and uh, I've, got, I've got a few photos there I'll just get you on a little trip again shall we pop over to the photograph table haven't got a lot of early photographs but we've got a few so come with me there we are try not to jiggle the camera so I'm going to show you this one down here first this one remember I said nestles and I was in the Burton 18 plus group where we did a bus trip for children well Nestle's let me borrow Nestle oh god I must remember Nestle <laughs> let me borrow an ERF uh, tractor and trailer for a um, parade in the town centre 
we did a parade and 18 plus group members dressed it up we dressed ourselves up as well we were called out of this world so it was all sort of handmade and my mum came to see me we were parked at the start ready to go on the parade around the town centre so here's me as a I don't know what I'm supposed to be really um, I made these sort of space helmet things out of papier-mâché I sprayed my boots silver and my hot pants silver <laughs> so we dressed we dressed up the 18 plus group was called out of this world so agency work uh, this one uh, forest tractors um, I said Atkinson there with a trailer on with a, a low bed on it so I would go round and pick up the tractors that had been hired out and then were finished with and had to come back into the depot so I went out and picked them up um, this one I'm sorry about the quality but they're not that good but anyway you see that I've got my name in the front there yes I did that a lot actually because people were getting to know me on the road and they were waving to me and this I can't remember what I was it exactly I was delivering there actually but it's a curtain side trailer and uh, yes I don't know <laughs> now on the agency job I also did trade plating trade plating is delivering new vehicles mainly new vehicles some second-hand vehicles but um, new vehicles from generally from the factory or from uh, where they come into the country at docks we would go and pick them up and put the trade plates on and deliver them so it's telling me here on this piece of writing there left-hand drive Mercedes delivered to Middlesbrough docks well I had to deliver that to the docks so that was going on the boat somewhere and there uh, is a new lorry I delivered that on trade plates uh, yeah so the trade plates are those red number plate thingies in the front so what I did was hitch around there wasn't transport provided but if you were holding trade plates and waiting at the side of the road um, other lorry drivers would see that you were actually working and they would stop and give you a lift there were good places to stop where you only had to wait a few minutes on particular junctions um, motorway and main roads and sometimes there wasn't much traffic about so you might have to wait around for a lift but I would either um, well I would usually get a lift to where the vehicle was deliver the vehicle then get a lift back home again so there we are uh, let's quickly move down this way uh, I got a forklift truck license as well <laughs> yes I thought I'm collecting licenses now so I will go and do some training on a forklift truck another string to my bow now I've got a piece of um, magazine here a page out of a magazine the pictures are not that big but it's truck and driver magazine and uh, I used to do uh, some articles for magazines, I used to write for them, so I did this article about me reflecting on my career and some of them you might just get a glimpse of, so there's a Leyland truck, a little Leyland truck there and I'm getting loaded with a bucket and that was a filthy job and a horrible truck. <laughs> uh, yeah just trying to think that was East Leak actually that one East Leak in Leicestershire um, British Gypsum I worked for there and oh my god that was a beast there a very old um, ARF with the three great big pipes on the back and some of these older trucks didn't have power steering I can't get any closer because it's going to go right out of focus but that lorry was a beast I had some shockers to drive in the early days but I had to do it 
Now, I'm going to let you quickly have a look at this, but I am going to be talking about Leicester Heavy Haulage in a bit more detail later on, because that's one of my um, later jobs. So, um, intercity railway carriages, and uh, this is an early job here, delivering milk all around Birmingham. <laughs> A milk lorry, an ERF. Yeah, you've noticed that there's ERFs there. ERF, ERF, ERF. And ERFs were my favourite truck. I thought they were brilliant. Very difficult to drive because they had a twin splitter gearbox. Um, but I got on very well with them. So, a little Leyland truck there. Delivering doors and window frames, I think. Or maybe just doors. And there I've got an, another Leicester Heavy vehicle there and I've got a low load of trailer on and a truck on the back of it. So, there's a few pictures to keep you going. Right, let's get back and finish off. Yeah. I'll just finish off by saying that I was starting to have nights out at that point because I was doing jobs which took me further away and I can well remember my first night out I was I got a little bed for TK truck a flatbed rope and sheet job with doors and windows window frames on the back and I would set off from Burton on Trent and I was going across to Stoke on Trent and then on to North Wales and it was going to be a night out so I did a couple of drop, uh, drops at Stoke-on-Trent, carried on further and time was getting on and I needed to stop overnight. And I thought, where do I stop? I don't know, I don't know where the lorry parks are. So I went into, um, uh, <laughs> oh, where did I go? Yeah, into a town centre. Nantwich, Nantwich, I've written it down here, Nantwich. Nantwich Town Centre and I found just a car park and it was a rigid four wheel truck anyway so it wasn't a massive big thing um, but it didn't have a bed so I had to sleep across the seats and uh, it didn't have any uh, curtains on it so I had to put newspapers up at the window I parked in this car park right in the corner with a hedge at the front and a hedge at the side trying to hide myself away and uh, <laughs> I picked up a few um, bits of supplies to eat before I got there and uh, parked up, locked myself in and put the newspapers up and I thought I hope nobody comes to disturb me and they didn't but it just didn't feel right actually not going home at the end of a working day and I don't think I slept very much uh, because it wasn't very warm and not very comfortable. Um, but that was that was my first night out. Um, people always ask this question about what do you do to go to the toilet? Oh, this is a bit embarrassing. I uh, I pee underneath the lorry. <laughs> Drivers can do it on the wheel, but I can't. So it's underneath for me <laughs> anyway um, there's always a way so my first night out at, at Nantwich was a bit scary but since then over the years I've slept in lorries week after week after week anyway I'll wrap that up now because we've gone on long enough with this and um, see you next time for number four yeah, I think so. Yeah, number four. <laughs> Bye.